Greetings everybody, this is Dave Matuzic from MacDAC Engineering and I've got another tech tip for you guys here. What I have here again is that electronics box we saw in an earlier video that I roughed out using a dynamic OptiRough toolpath. And I just want to show you a 2D toolpath that a lot of you guys may not be aware of that will help us clean up some of these areas where we had some leftover material before, kind of like these corners here. And I made a stock model, just so we can kind of see what our stock looks like. So you can see here, I have a lot of material left in some of these corners. And I'm gonna use a toolpath to clean out those corners and finish most of these walls. I can come in with another toolpath after to kind of finish up the very end of it. So let me show you what I mean by this. Let me turn off this here, and I'm gonna use a toolpath called Dynamic Contour. It's under the 2D milling toolpaths. And I'm going to pick a chain down here, just this bottom floor. Note my chain direction because I want to be cutting, climb cutting, so my cutter comp will be on the left. And I'm going to use this quarter inch end mill that I have here. And again, I'll use that radial chip thinning because I'm going to use a dynamic tool path. And I'll give it my feed per tooth for my aluminum block here and my SFM. And then set my other values accordingly. And I'll just turn on, take one finish pass at the end of five thousandths, give it some lead in and lead out. So we have a lead in lead out for our cutter comp to turn on. And here at a contour wall, I got to tell it some things. I got to tell it the radius of the tool that shaped the stock. So that was 188. And how much stock to leave we had left on, which was 30 thousandths. So it needs that information to generate that tool path. And again, I'm going to use my filtering here. And I'm going to hit OK. And what we get for a tool path, I'll show you here from the top. Let me unshade my part real quick is the tool is going to cut and take out these corners using dynamic motion but just those corners and then it'll come and take a final finish pass to bring everything in to final size and I will verify that here. And a quick trick under verify is if you've made a stock model, you can set your stock model to be your simulation model. So you don't need to save a separate stock model out like in the old days. I still see a lot of people doing that out there. So let me just run through this. Now I am aware there are some areas where we are going to need to come in and do at least one or two more tool paths. But I brought most of that wall in to size, just above these islands and over here, above these pockets here, I need to come in and maybe do a contour path just to bring that into final size there. So that's a quick tip on how to use the Mastercam 2D dynamic contour in conjunction with the last video we did where I used a 3D OptiRough tool path to rough out this box. Thanks everybody and have a great day.